What's up? My name's Glue Boy. Welcome back to the channel. And today is a project I've been working on for a while. Today, we're going to be doing one of my absolute favorite video types on YouTube, an iceberg. I hope you all know what an iceberg is. For some reason, those of you who might not, it's pretty basic. You have your iceberg image at the top that is surface level information, stuff you'll honestly kind of know just looking into 40k. And then you go down, down, down till you get to like the very bottom of that is so obscure and such a deep cut. How the fuck do you know that? In particular, the one we'll be going over is more lore based, lores and theories, less Warhammer community stuff. It's not really my wheelhouse. And as well, huge credit to Open Ads Throwaway on Reddit as his iceberg was a great inspiration. But uh, much like a lot of the other actual iceberg images I found when it came to 40K, it didn't like work for me. I was not super vibing with like any I found. So I made my own. The iceberg image that I'll be working on throughout this series, no clue how many parts it's gonna be, but you'll be seeing my own. I've created it myself, I have all the information on it, so uh, once this series is done, I'll have the full image posted probably on my Twitter and YouTube. So uh, have fun. But yeah, uh, we're just gonna get started essentially. So first up we got tier one. Tier one is like peak surface level. This is the stuff you're gonna see like right away when you start getting into 40K. So first up, we got Space Marine. Space Marines are like the main fucking thing in 40K. They're genetic super soldiers created by the Imperium of Man, and they are the, like main characters of 40K. They're the poster boys. You've seen like the Ultramarine images so often just out and about anywhere that's even closely 40K affiliated. There's a lot of different flavors of Space Marine. You have, you know, your brutal melee space marines, your stealth space marines, your gothic knight space marines, uh, your kind of annoying psychic ones. And then they come in like two separate versions. There's the ones who are loyal to the Imperium, and then there are the ones who are chaos aligned, the ones that turned against the Imperium during the Horus Heresy, something I'll talk about later. And that's just basically the camp. Uh, space marines are one of the most played factions in 40k. There's a lot of them. If you really like space marines, you are taken care of by Games Workshop. And then we got Necrons. Necrons are really fun. These are basically undead Egyptian space skeletons with like atom rays, Gauss rifles. They shoot you to you disintegrate. This is a long, long lived species who is now currently in the 41st millennium waking up in giant tomb complexes. A long ass time ago, they all went to sleep and are now rising. And they have a lot of shit going for them. They're all made out of liquid metal, like Necrodermis, as it's called. So you kill one and it can just get right back up as it repairs itself. They can like shift their bodies around if they're like extra cool and cognizant. Because basically at the lowest rank for Necron Warrior, that's just like a dude. Back in the olden times when they were actually flesh and blood, that's just a regular like farmer or bank teller. Then at the top of those who have actually kept their full personalities, that's like the actual nobility and royalty of their flesh times. And now they're the ones who are really intact with all of their faculties and personalities and all that. They can do a lot more necrodermis shifting. There's a lot of cool Necron stuff out there. The Destroyer Cult, the Flayed Ones, uh, and also just the absolute best characters in this setting. Like, oh my God, they're so fucking cool. Orcs are basically what you get when your local football hooligan decides to fuck the mushroom in his backyard. This is about what you get a hyper-violent fungus creation. They're literally bioweapons made a long ass time ago who all they care about is killing and destroying anything in their path. They care about war, literally nothing else. They're the happiest faction because they have no deeper care for things. They're also the comic relief. There is a lot of really goofy fun stuff when it comes to orcs stuff that I'll get into later in this series. Their vehicles are held together by spit, duct tape, and a, and a good attitude. And I mean that last part literally. And also I think they're pretty recognizable for anybody outside of 40K. Honestly, a method people use to get people into this setting is by telling them about the orcs. Like, you know, the orcs believe if you uh, paint a car red, it goes faster and it literally goes faster. They have jet pilots who get so amped up inside their jets that they just want to melee you. So they headbutt you with their plane killing them. 
It's, it's fucking ridiculous. They're one of the most fun factions in this setting. And then the Eldar, also known as the Eldari, which is uh, the name Games Workshop gave them because they can't really copyright Eldar. They're basically just elves in space with all of the personality of normal fantasy elves, very magically attuned, and there's like multiple flavors of Eldar. The main we're talking about right now is Craftworld Eldar. The other two I'll talk about later in this tier. But they have a lot of interesting things going for them. They all travel around in basically continent-sized ships called Craftworlds. And other than that are your basic elves. They live a really long ass time and so they master certain levels of skills and get really fucking good at them and move on to their, to their next path in life as they're called. As well, uh, their current situation is picking up the pieces after they've been cursed by the Chaos God Slanesh, which they brought into being and has horribly fucked them up since. I'll get into all that later. If you kind of like the idea of a society in decline, uh, a once great race fallen, the kind of great race that you can actually notice the remnants of if you travel around the galaxy, I think the Eldar are for you. Personally, uh, not my vibe. Not a big fan of them at all. Uh, and that's actually a common statement for a lot of uh, 40k fans so you know if you see some space marine players with the space marine profile picture screaming about how elves want to die uh, yeah it's kind of just standard fare and then we got the tau the tau are one of the newer races when it comes to 40k uh they're not the newest race there's a new one that took their seat the tau are very often reduced to being called weeaboo space communists which I don't think it's completely fair uh there's a lot more going for them mainly this stems from the idea that they want a common good, the greater good. They want all sentient life to get along, cooperate, help each other, general nice things. And in a world of 40k where it's grim dark, there's nothing but war, you know, they're kind of seen as the good guy faction. And then depending on your outlook, they might be. As there's uh, some possible mind control going on with the Tau and their leaders, the Ethereals, who have some real real weird and very potent control over all of Tau society. But essentially, uh, in lore, not really in tabletop, the Tau are pretty close to the Covenant from Halo, and they also are really technologically advanced because they have giant-ass railguns and big-ass Gundam suits. Uh, I'm not a mech guy, personally, so this doesn't appeal to me, but, you know, somebody out here in this audience most likely loves these big-ass fucking, like, shoulder rocket pods. And as well, it should also be stated, Tau, uh, ascended really fucking fast. The Imperium found them in like M35, M36. Like then a few thousand years later, they were fully spacefaring and had fucking Gundam suits. So uh, that's something. They advance really fast. So there is something to, you know, banding together, no more strife, no more war in your civilization, just working together scientifically, but nah. And then we got chaos. Chaos is like, the main corrupting force, if not like one of the big bads in 40k. Chaos is a literal corrupting force that lives in the Immaterium, the Warp. It's built up of your emotions, your feelings, and all that nasty stuff. Because when it comes to Chaos, when it comes to the Immaterium, anything you think becomes real. So when enough people believe a certain thing, it becomes actual tangible in the Warp. And as such, there are four current gods in the warp that in company for general large aspects that like basically all of the universe embodies. Real quick, we have Korn, the god of murder, bloodshed, war, honor, all martial stuff. If you've heard the phrase blood for the blood god, skulls for the skull throne, you know who Korn is. We also have Zinch, chaos god of trickery, schemes, change, big birds. Uh, essentially the reason things change any positive change in life, be it uprising against a tyrannical dictator or just making a vie for power in a political coup, both of those kind of appeal to Zinch. We also have Nurgle, chaos god of pestilence, decay, disease, rot, the cycle of life, entropy, a big ass green guy who stirs a pot of diseases. While he really loves spreading contagions around the galaxy, he also embodies like the natural life cycle of things. So. That's a pretty large aspect of him. Nature kind of feeds Nurgle as well. And then lastly, we have Slanesh, the chaos god of pleasure, pain, passion, hedonism, and generally just taking things too far. Slanesh is the newest chaos god and the birth of has kind of fucked up a lot of things in the universe. And in general, Slanesh is often just viewed as the sex god. It's not fully that. Slanesh is giving into vices, having a good time, throwing caution to the wind, and kind of just getting a little too overboard. 
That's Slanesh's vibe. And under all four of them, there are also demons. Demons are warp entities made up from individual gods, or sometimes all of them at the same time, and sometimes none of them. They are fully immaterial beings with no physical form, who uh, kind of just are embodiments of that personality, and often just go on rampages in the name of that personality, or you summon them to help you fight them. If, say, you're a powerful chaos worshiper, you can summon some demons and help you kick some ass. The Tyranids are another main enemy force when it comes to the universe of 40k, because basically everybody is out to get the Tyranids, since the Nids are a giant hive mind of bugs that just want to eat all organic life in the universe. That's literally it. They are hungry bugs that uh, are sourced from somewhere out of the universe. They only arrived recently. They're arriving to the Milky Way galaxy. And the worst part, on like all sides. So um, we're probably surrounded by Nids. And honestly, there's not a lot of crazy stuff to get into. You, uh, you see them, you kind of get their vibe. Very xenomorph in a way. And uh, they eat you. It's horrific. Imperial Guard are the like main human fighting force in the Imperium. They're literally the Starship Trooper. I'm doing my part, just militia of humans. And uh, that should be stated. Uh, they are regular people in the world of 40K where shit is ridiculous. They have uh, modern day military armor, flak vests that can resist bullets pretty well. They have a laser rifle that has no recoil, has really good range, really good uh, accuracy. And as well, uh, you can actually charge the ammunition pack as a grenade. And it's so powerful it can punch a hole through concrete. And it's the weakest weapon in 40k. It is shockingly bad. However, it is, there's a noted quote that I think is pretty important to remember here. Those who scoff at the power of the Laz rifle have clearly not walked through a field of thousands of them. Because, uh, yeah, sure, you, someone's shooting at you in a Laz rifle, you're in Space Marine armor, it's probably not going to do anything. You have hundreds all aiming at you, it's going to break through eventually. The Guard are all about overwhelming firepower and tactics. You have to actually outsmart a lot of threats in 40k to win, because a lot of times their strategies are kind of just run forward and kill. You can easily outsmart that. Or you have the incredibly cool strat of getting a lot of tanks, a lot of artillery, and just bombard the area and turn it into slag. I respect that a lot. And the Inquisition. The Inquisition is a uh, pretty popular faction. They're really cool and they're source of a lot of good stories because the Inquisition is essentially the secret police or like the super spies of 40k. In fact, like one of the main really cool Inquisitor characters, Gregor Eisenhorn, is basically James Bond in 40k. Read his books, they're really good. And the Inquisition have a lot of authority. Essentially, the Inquisition is like right under the Emperor's authority. That's like the office they answer to. Pretty big deal. They have massive fucking just authority in the Imperium. They can kind of do whatever the fuck they want, for better or for worse. They can imprison whoever they want. They can just shoot you on sight for being a heretic. They root out Chaos cults, Xenos infiltration, general just requesting human rights, stuff like that. And as well, they have the authority to do exterminatuses. Exterminatuses are uh, where you declare a planet is uh, too much trouble for what it's worth. So you blow it up. <laughs> That's their job. They press the button. Sisters of the Battle or the Adeptus Sororitas are really fucking fun. They're essentially nuns with guns and have some of the goofiest lore, some of the goofiest models, like a pipe organ tank a funerary procession full of like saintly artifacts. Their whole thing is the heavy religious vibe. They're all saints and martyrs and holy relics and the very Catholic church feel. They just love going around burning heretics, you know, blowing stuff up, murdering things in melee, just general fun military fighting force. They're great fun. They're super interesting. They have a lot of cool characters, a lot of like really cool saint characters. So uh, give them a look. I mean, also I have a sister's army. Like I don't regret collecting them at all. They're so much fun. Gene Stealer cults are an offshoot race of Tyranids. Essentially a Gene Stealer cult is kind of like a scouting party when it comes to the Tyranids to let them know where the tasty food is. Tyranids have to follow a uh, normal like travel. They can't go into the warp. They can't do a lot of faster than light travel stuff. So instead, uh, basically a Gene Stealer cult will set up get really situated, send out a psychic beacon, and find a good planet to chow down on. So the gene sealer itself is an entity that will actually inject its DNA into a person, 
and start creating this generational cult passing down Tyranid DNA, which actual Tyranid stuff, they're highly adaptable, quick evolutionary practices, and generational stuff is really important. The gene stealers are kind of like a step below that as they have a very concentrated hive mind as they kind of develop. And the further generations go down, the harder to actually notice the, the gene sealer taint in somebody. By like five generations, they're basically imperceptible as regular people. Once they get situated enough, they, yeah, create a psychic beacon and they commit an actual uprising against the planet they're settled on, causing untold havoc. So when the Tyranids do come by, it's like undefended because all the PDF and all of the guardsmen, they're dead. And so they can roll in, eat everybody, including the gene sealers and leave. If you like the whole like Mad Max vibe or just like murdering people with mining equipment, they're pretty cool. And then Krieg. Krieg are like the most favored guardsmen army, honestly, because all guardsmen are made up of different regiments. The Death Corps of Krieg are specifically a popular one, mainly for the memes, uh, happy gas max noises and you know, shovel. It's kind of their thing. Uh, the Death Corps of Krieg are fucking terrifying though, because they have literally zero regard for their life or personal safety. They are horrific because they will charge you down, kill you with their last breath because they don't care if they live. Their commissars, the people that keep morale and ensure loyalty, literally spend most of their time preventing Kriegsmen from just killing themselves. And also they're sick. I mean, if you like the whole World War One vibe, they literally got all of that. Trench warfare, trench shotguns, gas weaponry, literal horses, like all that stuff. And they're also terrifying to fight. Watch any short where Kriegsmen show up. There's like a couple animated stuff out there you can look at. Jesus, horrifying to go against. The Adeptus Mechanicus are essentially like the mechanical engineer aspect for the Imperium. They're not technically part of it, but they're close enough aligned. The Mechanicus also worship the Machine God. And you might be thinking, wait a second, the Imperium worships, worships the Emperor. Worshiping other gods is kind of messed up, isn't it? Well, they have a compromise. The compromise is that they revere the Emperor as the Omnissiah. Uh, machine Jesus. And as well, they revere like the machine spirit inside of every piece of equipment. And that's how they maintain their equipment. They're really heavily like a monk vibe, but like techno monks. Uh, you play the Mechanicum game. I never thought like dubstep pipe organs would be a good genre of music, but that's their style. And like, say you have to maintain your weaponry and your equipment. You can do basic things like drizzle oil on your gun, wave an incense burner over your armor, uh, sing hymns to a mech suit, write all your code in scripture, like stuff like that. And it all works. It all appeases the machine spirit. The bigger the machine, the bigger the machine spirit and the more effort it takes to appease them. Big mechs, it can be a week of full like religious practices to really get them going. And if you skimp out on that, like your shit's just gonna jam and not work, so. Uh, they got something going on. The Adeptus Custodes are my favorite faction and the one I play mainly on the tabletop. The Adeptus Custodes are essentially the personal army of the Emperor himself. Every Space Marine takes after a Primarch, which is basically their general back in the day and the source of their genetic material. The Custodes are kind of like that, but to the Emperor. Each Custode is literally handcrafted from infancy to become the perfect soldier. They are experts in all things warfare. They're geniuses, philosophers, artists, all that shit. They have beautiful golden armor, weapons handcrafted by the emperor himself when he still could. And they are so fucking cool. So cool that there's only 10,000 of them because of how much work it takes to make one. It is an investment and a crunch to actually create a custodian. But it's fucking worth it to actually have this in a fight because uh, basically a couple custodians can deal with a lot of threats in some really cool ways. Their main weaponry is like pole arms that also have guns in them so you can slash and shoot at the same time. It's so cool. I absolutely adore the custodies. And honestly, if you really don't like the idea of lugging around like a fuck ton of minis to your table, custodies are great. I have a tiny little Amazon box that fits my entire full 2000 point army. It is perfect. Then we got the Leagues of Votan. The Leagues of Votan are actually the newest faction in 40k as they were introduced pretty recently. The Leagues of Votan are essentially space dwarves. Back in the day they used to just be called squats but uh, GW didn't like that because to be fair they were just kind of goofy and dumb. Now the Leagues of Votan are their own thing. So 
to break down the terminology, the Votan are their gods, these like machine AI gods, but basically a good way you can view it is like, if you play Destiny, you know the like the war mines, that's kind of what the Votan are, and the main dwarves are known as kin. These are all gene crafted clones. All their databanks are from the Votan, they're put into like genetic pools and born out of vats. It's pretty cool. And also their main goal right now is to um, get more RAM for their gods because they're kind of uh, slowing down a little bit. They need to upgrade the parts of their god. And other than that, they go around uh, being dwarves, grudge filled, hyper industrialist, capitalist. Uh, it's really all they are. We also don't know fully a lot about them because we haven't actually had any main books come out about the Votan yet. So uh, we're kind of just waiting for that. The Harlequins are another version of Eldar you can get into. Essentially, the Harlequins are like elf custodians. Instead of serving, you know, the god emperor of mankind, they serve Kegrak, the laughing god for the Eldar. The like trickster god who runs the Black Library, which is essentially a repository of all knowledge. Kegrak adapts his own elves and actually makes them immune to a uh, pretty major curse that Slash put on them way back in the day, and they were all fucking ridiculous. <laughs> like, they are cracked with some of their weaponry, like black hole weapons, they shoot monofilament wire in your bodies and like it explodes out. They all murder chaos because that's really what they want to do. All in the name of like the great performance, this galaxy spanning performance that everybody has a part in. And like, we're still trying to see what the actual end of this performance is. Uh, most likely it's Kegarak killing Slanesh. Other than that, it's essentially like a bunch of clowns that fly through the air, giggling and laughing and dancing as they murder you horribly. They are stupidly strong. Knights are really interesting. So essentially a knight is a big ass mech suit that are in two different flavors. First up, the Imperial Knights. These are very haughty, noble, basically medieval knights in mech suits. They all come from noble houses, all of their own culture, and uh, they are fucking ridiculous. They drop in to battle on drop churches, which are literal churches that unfurl banners, shoot out speakers, and start lauding the name of the knights inside of the drop keep. As they make their like a WWE entrance onto a battlefield, speakers shouting every title they've achieved, who you're fighting this day, that goes on for like minutes. It's ridiculous, especially when there's another enemy knight on the battlefield that is directly like blasted into their personal speakers to challenge them to a 1v1. Picture any like rendition of a chivalrous knight and put them in a mech suit, Imperial Knights. And then conversely, we have Chaos Knights who've been Chaos Corrupted and instead of being noble and chivalrous are all bloodthirsty murderers who go on rampages. Rampages so bloody and beautiful to Chaos that literal cults pop up in their wake. There are cultists who follow them around just kind of really into the bloodshed. They are so cool. There's a lot of different versions of them, a lot of different houses or mercenary knights. There's a lot here. If you love mechs, this is your shit. Also technically the cheapest army to get into in 40K because you only need like five or six models. Uh, it's, if you're on a budget, buy big mech suits. Only in 40K you could say that. And then lastly, the Dark Eldar, the last version of elves you can get into. These ones uh, are fucked up. They are horrific people. They're essentially pirates and raiders and slavers. They do a lot of shit. Giving into base hedonism and horrific acts, basically to keep Slanesh at bay. Slanesh being the chaos god of, you know, hedonism, excess, pain, all of that. They have a little bit of a deal. Instead of Slanesh claiming their souls, all they have to do is do everything Slanesh likes and they won't get, you know, murdered and eaten. A decent outcome for them. They really enjoy it. And after a long time of doing this, God, they really like it. And they essentially go out as raiders. They raid planets, take people and any sort of resources and bring them back to their dark city and subject them to horrific torment. It is a common adage for humans, just regular civilians. If dark Eldar are invading your planet, just, just kill yourself. It is the best option because otherwise you can be brought back as a pit fighter for their amusement, just fighting a coliseum, or some weird ass flesh crafter will turn you into a sentient couch that he can sit on, just a big old flesh couch and just stab for fun. The, it, horrific, it's, it's an awful way to go in 40K. Hey, so no on-screen outro for this video. It was gonna be a lot longer and then I got uh, really sick 
over the weekend, so plans were shot. Uh, next part will be longer, more research, not an overview. So um, stay tuned for those. And yeah, if you like this, like, comment, subscribe, you know, do that stuff, uh, join my membership, and I'll see you next time.